Welcome to the live edition of In the News, where we're going to talk about the stories from this past week that have been compiled and curated by Jeff Richardson, who is the chief blogger at iPhone JD. Oh, and by the way, he's a prominent appellate lawyer in New Orleans, of course, as well. Um, my name is Brett Burney. I have a blog called Apps in Law, where I post reviews of different apps and also have a podcast where I talk with legal professionals about the apps that they use in their practice. Well, Jeff, it looks like on your post in the news, one of the big stories, of course, from this past week was all about air tags. So you have air tags. How, how do you like them so far? I do. It's the relatively big story of the week. I mean, we're sort of in yeah. that calm before the storm right now. We've got WDC, WWDC coming out in a few weeks. Yes. Uh, the Apple's already introduced the new iPad, but it's not out yet. In fact, I got a shipping notice that mine comes uh, next week. Yay. Um, so, but as we're waiting for all that <laughs> stuff to come in, you know, it, uh, AirTags are the latest new thing. Let's just put it that way. But they are, yeah. these are really interesting technology. Um, I've got a couple of them. Here's one right here with my little AirTag. Yay. Um, they're very cute. Um, do the you have one yet, discs. Brett? Have you heard I this one? don't. I don't yeah. have one, but man, I have been following, like you put, you linked to this great little story here from uh, from Macworld UK about this review. And I, what I loved about this is that they were talking about, you know, how, I mean, I, I use Find My iPhone all the time, right, Jeff? Like sure, I, sure. I use that service and I've been using that service for so long. And I like how he talks about it here in this in this article about, you know, Find My iPhone works on the map. But at some point, I guess with the AirTags, it switches from a map into like, I think they call it precision finding or something like that that he talks about, right? Yeah. Yeah. And what I, what I think is so interesting about this product is that it is, you know, it's a typical Apple, you know, you start with something that's pretty good in the 1.0 product. I mean, right? you're not going to just right? throw out junk. But having said that, they iterate over time and things get better. Yes. You know, we all know when the original iPhone came out in 2007, you know, so many, so many attorneys, me included, who relied upon Outlook, Microsoft Exchange for right. their work email. Right. It didn't even work with it. There were no third-party apps. I mean, it, it, you look at the original iPhone and it's hard to even imagine how different it is from the iPhone today. And AirTag's exactly. the same way, but but it reflects something that Apple's been working on for forever. I mean, the original right. Find Mine came out in, I think it was 2008. It's been a long time. And at first it was just finding your phone and only for right. people that subscribe to mobile me. And then over time, everybody had it to find their phone. And then you could find free friends if, you know, from where their phone is. And so this is just sort of the next version of it, of finding items. And, um, and I think it's yeah. actually pretty cool. You know, it's, it's air tags is almost like insurance in that you really hope that you never need to worry about it. You know, right, God forbid right. you have a hurricane or a storm or something like that. You know, it's, it, you know, if, if you paid your premium and done nothing else, that's actually a good thing, even though it seems right, like, why did I pay right. a premium? And it's the same good thing point. for AirTag. Like you know, why did I spend my 25 bucks on this cute little thing? It's fun to hold. Right. It's, it's, you know, round. It feels good in your hand. But, um, but the value of it, of course, is if you ever do lose, you know, I know that I myself haven't lost things very often. You know, I see right. there's two, there's two types of losing things for me. There's the, losing your keys. I hope that I'm right. never going to completely lose my keys, you know, leave them across the country. But right, what right. will happen <laughs> is I may not know where they are in my house. And that's where the thing right. that you were just referring to that you can, you know, pinpoint on where it is. And it does work. Yeah. You know, it will, it gets to the point where you can find out that, you know, on the map, that it's in my house. And then you can make it play noise. And just based upon that noise, that might be enough to find it. Um, right. But in case right. it isn't, it actually is pretty cool that you could actually move your phone around and it, it has an arrow that says, go left, it's go right. It's, right. it's like, you're hotter, you're hotter, you're colder, you're colder. I know, I love, he, he talked about that. It's like that, the, the old mm -hmm. game, you're getting warm, you're getting warmer, mm -hmm. you're getting warmer. Oh, now yeah. you're getting colder, yeah. <laughs> lukewarm. And it, and it does work, it does work. <laughs> it's sort of funny though, because when I did my air tag review a while ago, I pointed out that I, I left one in my car while I was at my with my daughter at a track meet. And right. it was sort of funny that, I just searched for it, even though I had been away from it for hours and hours. And it's like, oh yeah, it was seen four minutes ago. I'm like, how was it seen four minutes ago? Just because somebody happened to walk near my car that had an iPhone in their pocket. And you know, their iPhone and my AirTag may have been close to each other for a matter of seconds. You know, right. I, I doubt it was right. more than 30 seconds. And yet that was enough for Apple to say, oh yeah, I know where this thing is. This, so um, exactly. So I like it. You know, I, I like that it, it works well now. And I think that there's um, one of the articles I linked to today was talking about ways that AirTag could improve in the future. And I yes. definitely think that there are ways that you could do more to it. You know, 
a good example being, you know, put a hole in I, it, right? Yeah, put, we'll pull a hole in it. Well, different shapes and sizes. You know, you can't, I've seen right. people post on the internet that they put this thing in their wallet, but this thing is pretty thick to put in, a, yeah. in my wallet. Right. You don't want to have this right. in, your, in your pocket. I mean, sure, a purse, it, it goes fine or a bag, but, I, you know, I can definitely see Apple coming out with or different shapes, pack. different sizes, right. things that have holes in them. And, um, so I, I think there's there's some future to this. It's an interesting. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know that's what I've heard from most people. In fact, I think one of one of these articles. I'm not sure where it was. Somebody somebody had posted in the comment uh, down here that like had a drill and they were like drilling a hole into it because you know honestly it, it comes and I've heard people talk about it. It's a little fatter than I think what people would seem like, especially if you compare it to like a tile or something similar. Mm -hmm. And you can just drop it in a purse or a fanny pack or something. But most of the time, you link to this article as well where there's now a whole secondary market for these key rings, right? And it was yeah. just funny, this idea, I heard in another podcast talking about how, you know, they sell the, the AirTag separately, but then Apple, of course, sells uh, several of these key rings. <laughs> and somebody said, it's Apple selling you a $29 hole. Right, yeah. it's a hole. I mean, that's yeah, all it that's is. A funny way right? to put it. I mean, a, I mean, you, it fits the air tag really nicely, but you could put mm -hmm. something else there. It's a twenty nine dollar hole. But thankfully, of course, as we know, there's a lot of vendors out there that have been offering and supplying several uh, other options that you can do. Like I like Which this I like moment the, thing. Yeah, I like because the flexibility. You know, that's right, the thing. Exactly. It is. It yes, it doesn't have a hole on it, but in some ways, it just means that it's you can do whatever you want with it. You can right, like the one you right. have on screen right now. That if you want to yeah, like attach it to fabric. Or, um, you know, Apple has like their $35 one for keys. I just bought the cheap little Belka one, which was costs like, I don't know, nice. $10, $12. And right, you know, right. it is plastic. And you're like, well, it's just sort of plasticky. It's not as nice as leather. But you know what else is plastic is my key fob for my car, which are, they're both just sort of black. <laughs> they're smooth, black plastic. Right. And right. it's actually not bad. It feels sort of good in your it hand. It's it small, matches. you know, it matches. It's, 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 it doesn't get in the way. So if you want something fancy, if you want the Hermes, you know, $800 luggage tag, yeah. go for it. Goodness but gracious. Something cheap, or like you say, just open up a pocket. If if, if something has a, a zipper on it, right. it's just stick it in right. the pocket, or stick it in the purse or the briefcase, and so it's interesting. It's a, it's a nice All right. product. So, how have your air tags held up so far, Jeff? Yeah, they've held up well. I mean, the one thing they do is the one of on my keys is definitely starting to get a little scratched. But again, I don't yeah. care. I mean, it's not like right. I know that there are people right. that are very precious about like the back of their iPhone, you know, especially back in the days when it was more shiny or yeah, your iPods I got a back in the cover. day. Right. Exactly. And you know, and I, I sometimes have a cover, but you know what, if the back of my iPhone gets scratched, whatever, you know, right, it's exactly. just, it's, I'm using it. That just shows that it has the love of use. Right. And um, absolutely. I mean, I don't want it to get cracked or anything. And that's why the one that you linked to before, or you got it up right now that you can yeah, yeah. You know, freeze it. You it's can, a great you can, article. Exactly. He did all kinds of stuff washer. to this thing. It's great <laughs> he that put it's it adorable. in pants. He put it in the washer and then dryer. He put it in his freezer. It sounds like right. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, I think it, it pretty much passed all of his tests except at the very end. Where was it? Here he said he he goes. Uh, I parked my car in a gravel parking area and then he drove back and forth over the yeah, air tag. That's probably and then not he the stepped on idea. it, jumped on it. Well, yeah, it's not like that's going to happen pretty much. You know, most mm -hmm. of the time. And he did eventually say that it, it, at some point it kind of opened up because it's easy to replace the uh, battery, which in itself is pretty amazing, right? A product from yeah. Apple that you can replace right, the battery right. in. <laughs> but anyway, I just thought I've been following Kirk. You know. M m McKellen, McKellen Hearn uh -huh. for a long yeah. time. He's a great writer on this, but it's just great that like he tried to do everything he possibly could to put it literally through the ringer <laughs> as yeah. seeing like, what's it going to look like? How is it going to work once it's done? And I thought and you know that what it was reminds great. me of is AirPods because I, I yeah. know people yeah. who have had AirPods in their pocket that have gone through the washer and dryer cycle and they still work. And they're like, wow, didn't expect exactly. that to happen. So it's great. I mean, again, you can't rely Amazing. on it and you, you don't want to dunk your iPhone in the toilet, but if you do, there's a chance it might still work you know which if is nice you do so. it, it could still it could still work I, yeah. I love it i think that that's 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 just great and i expect that you know i mean i think that they've priced it nice enough apple has to where i'm not going to call it disposable necessarily but you can get some others right yeah, i mean yeah. it if is you meant one, to the you're out right. about 25 bucks 25 bucks so it's just, you know get another one, so. and by the way i was going to ask you real quick First of all, again, I already alluded to this. It has a replaceable battery. It's with a CR2032 or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's a very yeah. common, like, very flat easy battery. To buy. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You get them. I mean, I get packs of them from Amazon for several of the other remotes and stuff that I have on there. And Apple says that a battery should last for a year, which is pretty amazing in and of itself. But I guess my first thought, Jeff, was, well, wait a minute, well, you know, 
it's, I mean, I have a hard enough time remembering to change the batteries in my smoke alarms <laughs> every year. Like, what if it runs out? And I guess it just runs out, right? I mean, well, I think you it's supposed to give remember. you an alert. You know, it's not unlike okay. I have okay, the, the, the Apple remote for my Apple TV is um, when it starts to get low, it has a lightning port on it. But when it starts to get low, right. it will give you an alert saying it, it's it time to plug me, it exactly. in. Because that's right, another right, example right. of something that I don't know if it quite goes a year, but I mean, it definitely goes months and months and months between right. charges. So, right. um, so I think that's good. And, you know, the battery life is really interesting to me for this product because the ideal version of this product would have like built-in GPS. And I know that there are, I think right. Verizon sells something, um, I linked to it recently on the website that uh, that does just this. But the problem is if you have that, it becomes much more expensive and perhaps more, even right. worse, uh, right. the battery life is days. I mean, if this product right. had a battery life of days, I would have not, I would know, I would never recommend that you buy it. Right. But a battery right. life of a year, yeah, that's totally, that, that's reasonable. Absolutely, and, you know, it's worth When you get the alert, you know, you put in a new battery and you go another year. I think that's totally reasonable. I think one of the, you always have a fun link and most of the time it's a video, Jeff. I love this. I mean, I know I follow Joanna as well quite a bit. She's a, she's a great reporter. She does some and of the best she, videos. <laughs> and it's like, if you want to get a good, I, I mean, even though it's fun because she's literally putting an air tag up against, you know, finding an air tag versus <laughs> a, a drug sniffing dog, finding narcotics, you know, in the, in the purse or fanny pack. And, um, Ultimately, her conclusion is, you know, get a drug sniffing dog, I guess, if, if you if you can afford one. But, you know, the video does an excellent job of, of her. She compares it to some other trackers and it does a really good job of helping you understand, like, what the capabilities are of, of the uh, of the air tags, uh, yeah. we, we, which is just which is just great. On there. You know, the dog in that video did better within the house, um, yes, but the dog yes. did not do well when the item was dropped in a park because the dog, of course, would not even know to go to for the park. And, right. you know, that right. I mean, that's a perfect use case that I could definitely see. In fact, I've done this before with my AirPods. I'm at home at night and I'm like, where are my AirPods? And I look in the Find My app and right. it says, oh, well, we lost some of them in your office. I'm like, oh, I left them in the desk of my office. And, and AirTags would be even better than that because it's a little bit more sophisticated than the way that the AirPods work. But for a lot of people, that's going to be the thing. You know, I'm at my office. Where is that thing? You know, where right. is such and such? Right. Oh, it's at my house. Or, oh, and that's, that's when it it's at my best. parents' house. Or, you right. know, and that that's great. And then, of course, once you get there, if you use the extra features of finding the <laughs> precise location, it's, it works right. for that too. But I think a lot of people are going to find AirTags tag useful just just for that general location you know where absolutely is you know is it in okay, the cab that's great. <laughs> that i just got it yeah up. <laughs> exactly exactly all right next story a big one i know that you have talked about before and we i've just been exciting because both you and i know lit software very well lit software that makes trial pad transcript pad doc review pad they actually released a new app <laughs> um i know they've been working on something like this for uh quite a while but this is a brand new app that they called exhibits pad on this you had a fantastic review which came out a couple of days ago and then uh because i know both of us know uh, ian o'flattery and, and his team that that develop it he i i, I think he just wanted to say more <laughs> about this you did an excellent job covering it but admittedly you were very you were kind in here to say you know you haven't actually used it like kind of in real life right but i know that ian and and his wife terrence and his and his team they have used it already for some trials and being able to uh, show the jury the exhibits. Why don't you just give us a quick rundown of exhibits pad? Yeah, I mean, it's a very interesting app. And, you know, when I wrote this review, I purposefully did not reach out to Ian because I know him well, um, right. because I really wanted right. to sort of approach it like, I'm just looking at this for the first time because I, I knew the idea of the app was out there, but if I hadn't right. seen it yet. Right. And I right. wanted to sort of post some uh, some some independent thoughts um, but it was nice that Ian, he, he wrote me an email and he said that I started to write a comment on your blog and I realized that my comment was like 12 paragraphs long. So it is uh, long, he's like, I but put it's it in so email helpful and, though. And I just stuck it in there, but he has some good stuff. But I think it's an interesting idea for an app. I mean, this is a lit software as a company is great right. because they are just making apps for lawyers, which is obviously right. a tiny That's part right. Of the right. iPad market, and here, and it's not even all lawyers. It's you know, there although transactional folks can use some of their apps, it they're really geared towards litigators. And so right. then, this one particular app is just for the litigators that are at the trial or at the arbitration or the mediation, and using it for that. So it's a very very focused use case. But um, yeah, I've noticed that some of their links are not working. I see that you clicked on one yeah. that wasn't. But the um, it, it's it's an interesting idea because instead of giving the jurors 
paper versions of all the exhibits because right. I've definitely seen, you know, sometimes you have trials where the exhibits are up on a screen and that's right. good, but then sometimes the jurors want to look at it. So you might give them exactly. the binders or when right. they go back, of course, to the deliberation room, you, you put everything in binders, but those binders are a pain to put together and there's cost involved. <laughs> yes. and you have a third yes. party and then you change one thing and you got to redo everything. And, you know, I've been involved in trials. I'm sure you have too, where, you know, the, the night before people are ripping things out of a binder and Absolutely. putting in the new stuff. And so the yep. idea of just get everything on a little USB key and then just go around and just stick that thumb drive into each one of these iPads and then give whether it's, you know, one or three arbitrators that are using it or whether it's a dozen jurors plus some alternates or whatever, they just have their iPads. And I think it's brilliant because there is a real advantage to having exhibits on an iPad because the the, um, the fact finder has the ability to hold it hold it in their hand. They're not holding the document, but they're basically holding the document in their hand. They can pinch to zoom to get in and see things out. They can scroll through at their own pace. I mean, that is, if you're in a case where you really want the fact finder to pay attention to the exhibits, and I presume you do, because why else is it in evidence? Then I feel like this allows them to get closer to the exhibits in a way that's really unlike any anything else. It's unlike paper. It's it's certainly unlike just seeing thing across the room on, on a screen. So you right. know it's 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 a very specific case, and we need to do it. And obviously, you have to have the expense of having these extra iPads. Although once you buy them for the first case, you can use them in the second one, the third right. one, the fourth one, the fifth one. And it can and, be and, like the low end iPad too. It doesn't have oh, to be, be the, an the, iPad the, Pro. The, easy, the smallest, exactly. The cheapest. Yeah, you one, mentioned it here, like three hundred. Yeah, three thirty, three hundred thirty dollars. And that, that's a new here. one. You could even pay less if you get one that's used. You know, right. but um, right. but yeah. So I mean, yes, there's a cost. But I mean, if you got three of those things for an arbitration, for example, a thousand bucks, I mean, I've had our cases in arbitration that are worth millions of dollars. And, you know, the, right. you know, you pay 10 times that just for putting together some graphics. So um, I think in the right case, it's really good. But again, it goes back to this 1.0 product idea that we were talking about for AirTags. Right. Right. You know, right. we're starting here now. Lit software has put this out in the world and you know what's going to happen is over the next six months, a year, as things right. start to people come out of the pandemic, people are going to use it. People are going to send an email to to, to Ian and, and Tara and say here, you know, exactly. what if we could do this? Things I can't even think about. And right, then, right. then they're going to develop it. And I'm like, you know, there's, there's some real potential here. Absolutely. Well, you know, as I started reading your review, my thought is I've known several lawyers that loved the iPad so much. And this has been over the last, I don't know, eight, eight years or so. They're like, well, wait a minute. I'm taking an iPad to a deposition for my information. All my documents are here. So why can't, first of all, they take a monitor with them. So like what you alluded to, they can show the document on the monitor, but they also take another iPad and that's what they hand over to the witness. You know, I'm sure opposing counsel objects and whatever, but it's like, well, why? Because we've got all the documents right there. Now they've been using things like PDF expert, you know, or, 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 um, uh, uh, good, uh, good reader. You know, they've been using apps and I think Ian talks about that in, in, in his reply to you, like there are other apps that will do this, but they're not made specifically for this. What I think right. I love so much about it. You mention it and Ian mentions it in his post that it's just simplified, right? It's just like, it's locked down or it can be even as locked down as you really want it to be, but it's like, people aren't going to be able to go and play angry birds or something on these Mm -hmm. iPads. If you lock it down correctly and it literally is the same as if giving them a binder, but you're just doing instead of like a humongous, you know, four inch three ring binder full of paper that they're going to have to flip through around. They can just go right to it. Plus I love the fact Ian talked about the fact you can search for a specific document. You don't search the content because you don't want people to kind of like, you know, mine for different words, but you can say, you know, the document of, you know, the, the May, the May 4th, letter or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be or exhibit and they 72 can search, they can just search exactly. for 72 yeah. exactly and they can go right to that like they have done a very good job from what i have seen so far of sort of simplifying the interface on this like you can see in this screenshot here very big buttons right that like you know exactly where to go and i just love that because it has been built based on their experience like these you know i know ian and and tara both are what we i typically call like trial consultants more from the presentation side they have worked with this with the many many lawyers in this aspect and so they built this based on what they know not only over their many years of experience but even more uh specifically he mentions this in 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 your bottom of your uh, post here jeff that it's based as a reply to needs that they had during COVID. They needed something that was, how did he say it here? Necessities, the mother of invention. 
how a way to hygienically distribute documents to the parties in a federal trial. Mm-hmm. And they were able to do with the uh, the iPad, use the iPad. I just think that's all just really nifty. I love it is. It. And you know what else it reminds me of is the iPad itself. I mean, I have had so many cases where I walk in the room, whether it's the deposition or the hearing or anything else, and all I have is my iPad. And I see other right. lawyers around me that have, you know, the big cat cases and the briefcases and binders and everything else, because you never know what you're going to need. So you got to bring right. every possible case to the appellate oral argument. You got to bring every exhibit and every prior deposition to the to the to the the deposition you're now. But um, I love that just on my iPad, I have everything in exactly. something that takes is so small. And then when I need to find it, if I need to find the exhibit B to the motion that was filed 18 months ago. It takes me like 15 seconds, if not less, if not five seconds to find it. Right. And I've been there before where other attorneys have looked at me and they're like, wow, you're able to pull it up so quickly. And, you know, ultimately they come up afterwards, like, you know, how are you doing this? What apps are you using? Did you you know, and they translate secrets, iPad sales. And it's the same thing. So it's for the same reason that an iPad is so powerful for yeah. an attorney. It's just taking it for a fact finder, juror, you know, judge, whatever. Last thing I want to mention quickly, because you do a good job mentioning this, and Ian comes back and talks about it, is the USB thumb drive. You know, I, I don't know that many people know today that both an iPhone and an iPad, especially since at least iOS 11, but even more so now with the Files app built in to the, to the iPad, that you can literally plug a thumb drive into the bottom of an iPad. Now, you may have to have an adapter for this, right? If it's an older style uh, iPad, it's a camera adapter, which is weird, but it works and it works fantastic. And it works exactly the way that you think it would. And this is a great way that they were allowing folks to get documents onto those iPads quickly and consistently, right? It's the same files that can be loaded on all of those iPads that may be handed out to, uh, uh, to the jurors. Yeah, in my little test, I have something called a little hyperdrive here that just plugs there right into go. the side of the iPad, and it's got like the USB and the other things on it. But like you right. said, Apple also has the camera connector. It's it's actually yeah. very easy to connect USB to an it iPad. Is. And again, if you're using an iPad Pro, which is USB-C, right. and if you're using a USB-C thumb drive, then you don't even need the connector. But I don't think a lot of people would exactly. do that because the iPads that you're going to give out to the jurors – you're not going to be wanting to use a high-end $1,000 iPad Pro. I think exactly. you're going to likely have a cheaper iPad with a lightning connector, so you're going to want to have an adapter. But again, you, do, you can use that you're same right. adapter. You just you plug that adapter into the first iPad, and then you go to the next iPad, plug it in, suck exactly. up the exhibits. And I will tell you just from my little test that I did, Brett, and, and it wasn't a huge exhibit file, but I had a pretty decent size exhibits that I ran as a test, and it right. sucked them up like that. It was super quick. Real so quick I suspect that, that even in a big trial, if you had to reload, you know, 15 iPads, I mean, you could do that in a matter of minutes. Right, right. I love it. I love it. Exhibits pad from Lit Software. Okay, the last thing quickly I wanted us to talk about, which I just think is great. You linked to a nifty little tip. This was um, from uh, The Loop, which is great. But he actually linked to a little, um, it's, it's a video from Apple Support, right? Yeah. Talking about, which I, I had known that voice, uh, or, or, or voice recognition or, or what do they call it? Voice accessibility, right? On this, I forget exactly how, how they name it there. But it'll literally like tell you, I mean, first of all, Apple has always just done such a great job on accessibility features. I mean, I'm very fortunate to say I don't need to use it. I don't have an immediate family member that needs to use the accessibility features. But I have seen so many great stories, Jeff. And in fact, you've linked to them. I remember there was one blind lawyer in New York, right? And like his iPhone is basically his connection with the world. Like he's able to be so independent. Or maybe David Pogue actually covered it, I think. And the fact that you can, he uses all of those accessibility features for his legal research and it tells you and describes what's on the screen. Well, one of the things is, and this little video is fantastic in here, it goes through and you can turn on image description. <laughs> so as the camera is pointed at something on the iPhone, it will literally tell you what it's pointing at. I mean, I guess it gives the best. I just barely tested it out. I don't know if you got a chance to test it, it did, out yeah. very much, but, but uh, what was your experience with it? Um, it's amazing to me that it works. Um, it's really cool. Like, you know, you are pointing this at a, you know, uh, 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 I can't even think of what example I pointed, you know, this is a green chair or whatever it is that right, it, right. it's really interesting to me that it worked. Um, but what's even more interesting to me beyond this feature is, and it gets to what you were referring to. I love that Apple more so than any other company in, in my, uh, my belief in the technology field right. is so focused on accessibility. And I love it not because it means that 
somebody who's blind or someone who's deaf or has issues can use it, although that's fantastic. And right. I've seen people who are blind, for example, use an iPhone and it just boggles my mind. They are so good with the little, you know, very I, quick. How did you even know they could do it? But what's great, right. Right. So, I mean, that in itself is fantastic. Kudos to Apple. But when you focus on accessibility, it accessibility is just a fancy way of saying making it more usable for more people. Yeah. And there are yeah. so many things that have trickled down that started out as an accessibility feature and then turned into something that everybody can use. And so exactly. um, whether exactly. it's something, you know, as obvious as Siri, you know, speaking to your phone to rather than typing or, right. you know, third party input devices or read the text on a, on an article, all read the text things, out loud to you. Yeah. You know, people, you, you may not use it all the time, but it's nice that it's there and it's there because Absolutely. Apple spent the time to do it. So what I, what's neat about this technology demo is it's just cool, but it just yeah. shows that if they're doing this today, what are they going to do five years from right. now? You know, it's right. just going to be so much more interesting. Well, I, I certainly encourage folks to go and try it out, but I will tell you if you've never used this voiceover recognition, um, it does require a different way to interface with the camera. So yeah, so it changes I know the interface people, on your phone. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a major change to do it. You might want to start right. just by watching the video and appreciating it. From right. There. Exactly. Um, but if you're not timid, you can change your phone and it will work. Uh, once I changed it, I'm like, okay, I'm right. going to have to change it back. Exactly. It I got to totally change it back. the interface on the phone. Exactly. Because you have to tap once and it tells you what you're tapped on. And then you got to double tap it to actually select it. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's again, Wonderful, fantastic for the people that need it. I, I'm just so thrilled that they have, you know, the capability to do that. But if you're not used to it, it will be. And by the way, the it, it just the last little thing I wanted to mention. I love, you know, of course, lawyers have to have to crop up everywhere, right? I don't know if you notice on this video, voiceover recognition should not be relied upon in circumstances where it could be harm or injured or high risk situations for navigation of the diagnosis or treatment of anyone. <laughs> It's like, mm -hmm. how else, you know, how much more fine print could they put on that, Jeff? I just, I, I love know. the fact that it's... they had that at the very, at the very bottom. Hey, you know, go Apple lawyers, lawyers right? have got to, got to make money too. They got to, they got to earn their keep. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Jeff, thank you so much for being on the show today. It was great to go over in the news and uh, we'll talk next time. Sounds great. Talk to you next week. Bye.